Okay, so here we are in McGill um, at the Men vs. Wild. So we're going to explore, we, we already explore different areas of McGill, and um, now it's time uh, to explore the wild gymnasium of McGill. So we explored uh, the area of uh, the library where we, we saw the silent reader. Uh, we also studied the over motivated uh, rider of bicycle in the winter. There, there's a lot of this in Megan. And now uh, we're going to explore the gymnasium. Okay, so here I come. And I, I, I don't know what's, what's in there. I, I, don't, I never went to. So we are going to try to see what kind of creature we can discover in the gymnasium. Right there. Oh, okay. I'm seeing a creature right now. Okay. Just, just over there. So here she is. Um, it's a wild animal. I'm pretty sure I've never seen any of them before. And I will call it the um, just Stratentis dribblis. And uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's very rare in the nature like that. We're going to try to approach her without without being seen. So we're going to just going to take this trash. Try to, try to approach her. We're really subtle. She ain't seeing us. Just trying to approach her. Really, like not to disturb her too much. Gary, <laughs> catch her! Oh, oh, she catches. She catches her. Oh, nice jump, carry. Okay, you can you can leave her. You can leave her. All right, here we are. So, um, what 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 were you doing with the ball? Playing basketball. Basketball. I'm pretty sure it's crazy. What's what's uh, what's basketball? You know what basketball is? Uh, no. What? It was invented by James Nemsmith in Springfield in 1891. This is a big sport. James Nemsmith was born and educated in Canada in this same university. McGill University is where he did his studies. So when he invented it, it came to Canada one year after by one of his students. It came here in New Brunswick. The original game of basketball involved, thir involved 13 rules and a peach basket hung about 10 feet above the ground. And even though the first game was played in the United States, 10 pl uh, players from that game were university students from Quebec. An important part of basketball is the uniform. Did you know that before the 1900s, you could play with any attire? You could even wear shoulder pads. Let's, let's take an example. Literally in, with any equipment. Do you believe we could play in a football attire? Hmm. So, the first equipment was invented in 1901. So the first shorts were knee length and they were padded just like in football. And also the jerseys were either sleeveless or they have sleeves. And the women were required to wear the ones that have sleeves and then the men were required to wear the, to wear the ones that were sleeveless. So the 1920s were really important for us. Um, the shorts were just above the knees and they were made in nylon and polyester. were very important because it stopped the sweat coming into their hides when playing. They also wore iny socks because it was warmer and they believed that the warmer it is, the better the performance. But that was not true. So today they wear smaller socks so it's not encumbering. Originally the shorts and the jerseys were fitted to the body. It wasn't until Michael Jordan in 1984 requested that the shorts and the jerseys were baggier and had more room because he was tired of pulling on his uniform when playing basketball. Michael Jordan, who that? In the 90s, the, best, the basketball uniform fell under the hip hop culture, under their influence. As you can 
can see, the shirts were a lot more longer and even more looser. And the shirts had very bright colors, and the logos were very suggestive to hip hop bling. They were extravagant. You could even see that the holes on the side, the arm holes, were very, very big. For the woman, they were a bit smaller, but you could still see their sport bra underneath. So they were quite wide. So the jersey in the front, there is always the logo of the team. So in this case, it's the Warrior. And in the back, is the number of the player and usually there is the, their name on the top on top of it and it will be always the same number in uh, whatever game they play when the team is outside they wear their dark shirt so they will, they will wear the blue shirt but uh, when they play at home they, they wear their white jersey so like this the lighter shirt So thank you, student Tis Dribbles, for your cooperation. Uh, it was nice to meet you. So we're going to explore more animal for uh, for the second part of the, uh, of the channel. So I just discovered a new animal in the gymnasium, and this one, just 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 look at it. It's a it's a rare creature called the Studentis Shootis. We'll try to sneak on a red catcher. As you can see, she's really bad at shooting, but she'll explain us why. Gary, catch her! Catch her! Here we go! Here we go! We got you! Alright, so let's take her to our lab. Let's go. So now that I have captured the uh, shooter studentus, we'll, we are going to interrogate her. Let's go. So, hello, student studentus. Student student Now, tell me things about basketball. I want to know more. More. In 1946, the NBF uh, first game was played in Toronto at the uh, Maple, Maple Leaf uh, Gardens. And in 1973, the Basketball Canada voted to adopt the international playing rules of the FIBA. Then it transitioned into the NABO. was the first Canadian player to receive the MVP award as he was playing for the, uh, the Phoenix Suns. Now that we learned everything about basketball, I think we're ready for a demonstration. Let's go to the gym! <laughs> 